Welcome back to Good Morning Europe. Well, as much of the European Union's future trade policy is being dominated by Brexit discussions, trade envoys from Brussels are also working to forge a new relationship with a country a little further abroad. Australia is in the middle of free trade negotiations with the EU, and the talks are placing fresh scrutiny on a raft of the country's policies, including food trademarks, climate action, and the detention of asylum seekers in offshore facilities. Well, to discuss this and more, we're joined here in the studio by Australia's Ambassador to France, Brendan Byrne. Thank you, Thank you Rosa. for coming in. Let's start off by talking about free trade, trying to get this deal negotiated. Europe is your country's second largest trading partner, so what are you looking to achieve in this deal? The European Union is also Australia's largest foreign investor. So for us, this is really the missing piece in the relationship between the European Union, France and Australia. We see ourselves as the launch pad for European firms into the Indo-Pacific, where Australia has a raft of free trade agreements that have already entered into force. And that's reflected by the strong presence of European firms in Australia. We have more than 100 billion euros of defence contracts with European companies being built in Australia. This is ultimately an industrial agreement to facilitate uh, those contracts being executed in Australia and to bring our two countries closer together at a time when, frankly, the rules-based order around free trade is under strain. This would be a, a signal gesture by, by the European Union and Australia in support of the multilateral system. One potential hurdle there might be is the EU would like to define geographical indicators on some foodstuffs. How much of a sticking point do you think this might be? Look, Australia is a strong agricultural country. Uh, we've started a consultation process on that. But it is passing strange that a, a market of 500 million people in Europe sells more agricultural produce to Australia, a country of 25 million people. You don't need to be a trade economist to know there's an imbalance there and certainly Australia, as part of a broader deal, would like to see a greater balance in that trade. But talking about it being strange, surely it's fair enough for the European producers of, let's say, I've got a list of some of these here, Comte, Gorgonzola, Feta, to say, well, of course they should be made here, so Australia can't sort of piggyback on, on that name. Look, I'm not challenging that. Australians love and respect European culture. We're, we're made up of many European immigrants. That uh, element will be considered as part of broader negotiations, including market access. It's important to recognise that in beef, for example, Australia, which focuses most of our exports on Asia, has a rightful expectation that we will, will get a fair hearing in the access to European markets. There's a large uh, interest in Australia. We had 1.6 million Europeans travel to Australia last year. They want to taste Australian produce, and we think an FTA would be a good way to, to allow that to happen. Talking about European markets, is Brexit going to be an opportunity for you in securing this deal? Look, Brexit's a matter for the British people and the British government. What, what concerns us is to see a, an orderly process. Uh, we're very uh, close partners. We have historic ties, obviously, with Great Britain. But Europe also is important to us. Europe provides an important voice, shared values with Australia, and particularly in defending the rules-based order that I referred to earlier. Something we've been talking about already on Good Morning Europe, and there's more to come on this, is France are currently having a debate about their, their policy on immigration and refugees and asylum seekers. As Australia has a very firm policy. Would you say that European leaders could learn anything from the Australian approach? Look, Australia is a unique continent. We've got our own set of circumstances. Other countries will have their own circumstances. But Australia is a country built on immigration. One in four people born overseas, one in two with at least one parent born overseas. We welcome 160,000 immigrants a year, among the highest in the world, around 19,000 refugees. We've welcomed close to 900,000 refugees to Australia since World War uh, II. Uh, you're, you're, speaking very, you're speaking very positively. So absolutely. would you say, for example, your offshore detention policy had been a success? Well, we've stopped the boats, which were really part of a criminal organisations' efforts to offer illegitimately access to Australia, which saw the loss of some several hundred lives. And for Australians who care about what happens in our territory, in, off, offshore from Australia, were deeply uncomfortable about that. We wanted but to some keep, people we wanted, were, we wanted some to keep people, the license. Sorry, were we deeply uncomfortable with the way the conditions in which those people were being kept in indefinitely. That that would cause a, a great deal of uncomfortableness and concern. Amnesty International said actually the conditions were tantamount to torture. Well, the UN uh, High Commission for for refugees has found Australia performs very strongly on refugees. Uh, the countries with whom we have agreements are sovereign countries in our region who are themselves signatories to the to the refugees convention. We 
we've reduced the numbers to around 600. We have 1,200 uh, refugees that are in a swap arrangement with the US. We're looking after these people. We provide health and education. But it was important to us that our immigration policy not be left to criminal organisations which were putting lives at risk. Australians, I saw it with my own eyes, boats uh, smashing against uh, the Australian uh, coastline of islands in our territory was intolerable. What we've managed to do is keep licence for a generous immigration program and through controlling our borders, I would say, kept the far right vote in Australia to a very low level. 4% in the last federal election compared to uh, many countries, that's a minuscule amount because we've kept support for one of the most generous immigration programs so in the world. Th that process, should EU leaders implement it? I mean, they've got an ongoing problem with migrants arriving in the Mediterranean. No coherent policy, really, across the European Union as to what to do. You know, we've had uh, also on this program talks of a boat crashing in Lampedusa causing the deaths of, of 13 people already. So, you know, what should European Union leaders Look, these do? are distressing scenes. These are questions for our European friends. Australia came to our policy after trying different approaches. Uh, and we, we feel that we found the right position. We've stopped the boats. There's not been a boat arrive in Australia so for So you're saying it's years. been successful. I'm I mean, not, Matteo Salvini had that I'm saying for Australia it strategy. suits our conditions. It's, it's not for me as a foreign diplomat to comment on what other countries should or shouldn't do. OK, and another topic of uh, kind of contention maybe that we could we could touch on is we've had two weeks starting of protests, Extinction Rebellion are making a huge scene by saying we think climate should be uh, seen as an emergency and need emergency measures. Uh, what about the status of, of the barrier reef in Australia? We're seeing mixed reports as to, you know, where that's actually looking in terms of its green credentials. Very poor is actually the definition. Well, let me say, first of all, Australia has very ambitious goals under the Paris Accord reducing our emissions by 26% by 2030 over 2005 levels. We've got the highest investment in renewable energy per capita in the world. We'll reach, we've reached 24% of renewable energy in Australia. That exceeds Europe's goal for next year of 20%. Two million households have solar panels on their roofs. We are custodians of the Great Barrier Reef. We are spending uh, 300 uh, million euros to protect that asset. Our emissions are only over one, just over 1% of world emissions. So we're dealing with the consequences of the global impacts of climate change. And we are taking our responsibility seriously. We are piloting a number of approaches, quite innovative approaches, uh, film, films of chemicals on waters, uh, looking for uh, new species of coral which are heat resistant. It's tough, but we're doing it. And in terms of overall emissions, we're doing our part. Thank you for speaking to us. Australia's ambassador to France, Brendan Byrne. Appreciate Thanks, it. Appreciate it.